In this video, we're going to define descriptive statistics and do three of the basic st descriptive statistical plots, the stem and leaf plot, the line graph, and the symbol bar graph. All right, so let's get started. What is descriptive statistics? Well, as pointed out in an earlier video of statistical vocabulary, it's the numerical and graphical ways to display data. So let's just do a stem and leaf plot. Now the reason why we're going to spend time doing plots is because the picture of the data can tell a pretty cool story. And so I'd like to do that with, you know, just some random ages of teachers at a conference. So there were teachers who went to a conference and we said to ourselves, okay, what can we learn about the people attending this conference based on their ages. So now we have the data. Let's find a good way to categorize it. Well, let's actually go by age. And with the stem and leaf plot, what we're going to have is a stem or stick to separate the stem on the left hand side from the leaves on the right hand side. So we normally wouldn't label the stem, the stem and the leaves like this. But just for the first one, the stem is going to be our decided unit. And in this case, since we're going from 32 to 61, we can say that our stem will be in the tens position. So these are the 30s, these are the 40s, these are the 50s, and then the 60s. Now, it's kind of cool that we have all of this data in order. Because what we can do is we can take that first piece of data, the 32, and put a 2 there. Now the 2 is in the leaves position. So for this problem, the stem is the tens and the leaves are the ones. So this would represent, this 2 represents a 32. But you'll notice there's two of them at 32. So I'm going to write it twice. So here it is, 32 and 32. So I have two of them here. And then I'm going to keep going with 33, 34, and 38. Now, when I start my 40s, you'll notice that I do have a 40, so I'm going to put a 0 there, and the 0 represents 40. Now I have two 42s. I have a 43, a 44, a 46, and two 47s. Two 48s, sorry, three 48s, and 149. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to line these numbers up below each other. This is so I can get a very good scale uh, based on how many numbers are in each of these stem positions. Now if we go to the 50s, I have two 50s. I have a 51. I have three 52s. I have a 53 a 54, a 56, and then starting over here, two 57s. And then finally I have a 60 and a 61. So this stem and leaf plot is using this very descriptive way of showing you where the distribution is. We can get into terms like variation and where you feel the balance point is of this group. Now, what you might have noticed, that in this stem and leaf plot, it still looks pretty clustered. So, one other way you could have done this is by keeping the stem as the tens position, but doubling up. Now, if you're kind of curious why am I doubling up, it's because what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make the first leaf section between the numbers 30 and 34 because there are five of them there 30 like there are five I should say of them what is the them referring to there are five numbers between 30 and 34 if you count them as like this 30 31 32 33 34 and there are five between 35 and 39 35 36 37 38 39 so each of these breaks in the stem represents an equal amount in the leaves column in terms of scale. And you can do this. 
I would try to not break this down any further because it may not work to your advantage, but you might see a better picture if we do it this way. So let's replicate the stem and leaf plot using this breakdown. So here I have 32, 32, 33, 34, and then 38. Then we're going to have 40, 42, 42, 43, 44, and then I have to skip down to here for the 46, 47, 47, 48, 48, 48, 49, and then 50, 50, 51, 52, 52, 52, 53, 54, 56, 57, 57, and then 60 and 61. Now this tells a little bit more of a story. This shows you that most of the people are between the ages of 50 and 54, slightly beating out the group between 46 and 49. So you can see that this, by breaking this down into a smaller interval, even though we're still going by tens, you can actually tell more of a story based on this. If you turn your head sideways, it makes a pretty good bar graph too. Now, for problem number two, you'll notice that these are miles jogged by, you know, middle, high school, cross-country team. And it seems like a lot of people stuck around some pretty moderate miles, but then we had a group that went way long and one serious runner. So in this situation, what I would do is, and I'm going to use this left-hand column to write this down since I feel like I'm going to run out of some vertical space here is we're going to have the stem be the miles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then the 1's be the tenth of a mile. So we had someone run 1.1 miles and also 1.5 miles. And then we had a lot in the two mile range. We had 2.3 miles, 2.5 miles, and 2.7 miles. And then we had 3.2, 3.3, 3.3, 3.5, 3.8. Then we had 4 miles, or 4.0, 4.2, 4.5, 4.5, 4.8, 4.7, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, 
So again, I've, I'm, I'll be complete disclosure. I made up this data uh, because I, I have not worked uh, retail in a, a Sprint or Verizon or other AT&T cell phone stores, so I don't know what the actual numbers are. But I threw in some numbers about what I think you would have some slow nothing days and you'd have some really crazy busy days and you'd have a lot of days where you do a moderate amount of work. So let's let's talk about the line graph. The line graph is pretty straightforward because we're going to put our X as our number of cell phones sold in a day and our Y is frequency. Frequency is going to be your Y um, axis for these descriptive statistics problems. We're going to do a lot more work with domain and range later on, but almost all the time your table is going to be given to you with the X and the Y in that order. So this is going to be my X axis with number of cell phones. And it's good math to write down your, your units here, cell phones sold per day. And we're going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since this is so short, I'm going to label each one of these here. Make my 5 look a little bit better. Okay, on my x-axis, it looks like I'm going to 14. So maybe counting by 2's will get me there in a rapid fashion. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And because this is, again, relatively small, I'm not going to be too lazy. I'm just going to write these all out. So 0, let me change colors here. 0, I sold two cell phones. and Or sorry, there were two days, because this is going to be the frequency. Let me label my y-axis here. Abbreviate. Okay, so there were two days where I sold zero cell phones. There were five days which I sold one cell phone. And there are eight days I sold two cell phones. 14 days I sold three. Seven days I sold four. And four days I sold five. Now in a line graph you would connect these with straight edges and do it as best you can. And that's it. That's a simple line graph. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the bar graph. Now the bar graph is going to have the same y-axis to, sorry, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Your x-axis will also be the same than cell phones sold per day. So let's mark off the frequency here. Cell phones sold per day. And in this case, we're going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now you'll notice I didn't put tick marks in because what I'm going to do, since the first one is too tall, because there were two days where I sold 0 cell phones, I'm just going to make a bar. And this is different than a histogram because histograms have tick marks and they go off of a rigid x-axis system. This is something I can easily use categorical data like this that also happens to be represented with a number. So this is kind of a cool blend of the numerical slash categorical data. And now we have one that goes up to, to five. So take this up to five, keeping the space between these two. Make sure there's a little space there. And then we're going to go up to eight for two, just like that. Three is going to go all the way up to 14. And then four is going to be seven. Apologize for my art on this tablet. And then we got four for five. And you can shade these in if you'd like to. But this is making a simple bar graph, as easy as it is to make the line graph. You'll notice that there are spaces between your bars uh, in the bar graph. And in the line graph, you're only connecting the dots. You're not connecting them to the floor. And that's important when we get to the next video, which goes over a slightly more challenging concept. Instead of doing a bar graph, we're going to be doing a frequency 
a relative frequency histogram. And instead of doing a line graph, we're going to be doing a relative frequency polygon. So compare and contrast these displays that you just made with the ones that we do on the next page. And again, thanks for listening and watching.